and she said, should I go to the emergency room? Because that's how hard it was for her to breathe. Well, the, the primary care doctor heard the symptoms that she had. She told her, you know what, just put on a 24 hour healing pain, take some pain medication, not too much because you're pregnant. And she said, lay back down. And the administrative director said, oh no, this pain is getting serious. I think I need to go to the emergency room. And that's how some of us are today. Some of the things that we used to be able to do easily, such as taking a deep breath, have gotten hard. It's harder for us to get to the deck, get through the day without worry. Sometimes even getting through the night without crying. And even though we don't share these things with other people, God sits high and he looks low. And he hears our words. He hears, he sees our cries. He put them in the Bible. So the, the thing is also is that a lot of times the enemy stands around open doors. So sometimes it's not hard for you until that door of your promise becomes open. And so it is also true that our people perish by the lack of knowledge. So I just want to give you some knowledge today just to show you how to get through those labor pains and how to still access your problems. Esther in the Bible had to be very obedient. She was given different instructions on how to hide her Jewish, you know, descendants in her inheritance. She was told how to make herself presentable before the king. And if Esther had not listened and obeyed the Holy Spirit when it spoke to her, she would have missed out on her promise. So God does not always talk in a very loud voice. Sometimes it's just a quiet, still voice, just in your heart or in your mind. Don't doubt yourself. Listen to that voice. Because in order to get through that door and to get to that promise, you're going to have to obey him. Another thing is, you're going to have to go through a purification process. That was one of the most hardest things that I had to go through. Sometimes we feel like we're ready for marriage, or we feel like we're ready for the promotion, or we're ready for the business, or we're ready for the loan. We're ready for, you know, the, the restored health. We're ready for those things. But sometimes we have to take a look at ourselves. It's not always the people that is around us that's stopping us from getting into our promised land or our blessed place. Sometimes it is the very man or the very woman that is in the mirror. So some of those things that we want to address is low self-esteem. We want to address anger, bitterness, unforgiveness. You have to forgive the father that was not there. Because if you hold bitterness in your heart for the dad that was not there, then how are you going to be a great dad and set a great example for your child? In my case, I did as a child, but with my childhood, I had to face some of my things. Mental illness cost me a lot in my childhood. But I didn't run from it. I faced it. I went to school. I learned about it. I researched it. And now that I own my own mental health clinic, Mental illness have paid me everything back, and it, it also has some more that it's going to pay me because of what it took from me. So the very things that we run from are the very places that are power lies. And if you don't go back to that place of bitterness or pain or anger or resentment, maybe from what the last spouse did, or maybe the spending habits where you overspent on the harvest that God gave you, you have to go back and correct those things so that you can get the power that God has for you to have. Low self-esteem did not just start in 2015. It's in the Bible of Mark 5. This is a story of a man with low self-esteem. It says they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of Gethsemane. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had shackles, he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart, and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with the stone. We look at this man and we say that we're very different from him. But you cut yourself every time you say you're not pretty enough. You cut yourself every time you say you're not smart enough. You cut yourself every time you doubt if you're going to be able to go to college and finish. Every time you look at a spouse and say, well, you know,
know what? Maybe that person is too good for me. So we have to make up in our minds that we would not be bound to the things of our past. We would not be bound to no self-esteem. Because the Bible also says that marvelous is the work of thy hands that created me, and that my soul knoweth right well. That means even with your flaws and all, you still was made in the image of God. And if God is a creator, if he owns the heavens and the cattle of a thousand hills, if he has the ability to measure wind and wind never fail, if he was able to come up with the earth that is still in existence and come up with a time clock in the beginning of time that we are still bound with today, if you are made in his image, so can you. So today, we make the decision to cancel every stronghold to break every chain that is held us back. And we do that now in the name of Jesus. The last verse that I'm gonna speak on, and I also am gonna speak this, the Lord spoke this to Joshua, and so as it is with us. It says, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, I promise you, what I promised Moses, and this is God also even speaking to us. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land. I have given you from the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all of the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous. For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors that I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. And that is what I say to you. We have youth in this room today. You will not just be limited. Our youth will not just be limited to rapping or music. When we went to that MLK Museum today, we saw the potential and the power of what one obedient man can do. You have the power to change this world. And any enemy that tells you that you can't, we already know that the devil is a liar and he is defeated. And when he say that we can't, we say that that's confirmation for what we can do. So the same way that God was with Moses, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, the same way that God was with Joshua, so will God be with you. I want to thank you all for listening to me, and I want you all to take these things in mind when you get ready to face your promised land. Because there is going to be some times where you're going to be, you know, discouraged. But just like Joshua, when he went down in the pit, his pit was also a sign that his promise was yet to come. When he went down to the prison, right after that, he got elevated into the king's palace. And just like Jesus Christ, when he went up to the cross and he faced his hardest times, at that point, after he went through that and made it over, he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. So I say to you, be strong and be courageous and don't turn back because every place that your feet trod, if you have faith, if you obey, and if you believe in God, he will give it to you. Thank you. Ah.